Hi guys, I'm Carl O'Rourke from Metal Wani, and today I have the pleasure of catching up with one and only Mr. Dizzy Reed. Dizzy, thank you for taking the time to talk with us today, man. Um, it's, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So let's talk about your debut solo album, Rock and Roll Ain't Easy. A very exciting time for you, I would imagine. Uh, you've had like such an amazing career already. It's hard to believe this is only happening now, but it is. It's out. It's a great record. And uh, it's no secret you're a busy guy. I believe it took 10 years for this to happen. So when, where, and how have you been writing these tracks? Was it on the road, at home? Where did you find the time? Um, you know, I was... It was a period of time where I was at home. I started I started writing some songs and I had some vocal ideas that were sort of stuck in my head. And I um, made some demos. Um, and then, like, uh, one of my favorite activities is to, uh, you know, get drunk and play my demos for friends. And so that happened. Of course. Um, There's a few people, uh, Del James, who, who um, co-produced the record with me, uh, Richard Fortas, who plays a lot of guitar on it, Mike Duda, who plays a lot of bass on it. Um, they kind of sort of encouraged me to... Uh, maybe get in the studio and record this stuff for real, but we didn't really have the resources at the time. Um, I was out on tour with somebody, I think the Psychedelic Furs. I got a call from Del saying that he found a studio where we could go in and record on a spec deal, which is sort of like, you know, they get paid when we get paid. Um, and uh, kind of went from there. We didn't have a band, um, but we knew a lot of people that, that, that uh, were willing to come down and, and, and play on a song or two or, or three or four or whatever. <laughs> sure. And... Um, that's, that's what happens. Uh, I don't think any of us realized when we st uh, started it that it was going to take as long as it did mm -hmm. um, just to track the stuff. Uh, and, and, you know, again, when you're doing something on uh, spec time, uh, you're in on downtime when the studio is not working. You know, not getting, you know, and so uh, it's a little bit more difficult to schedule. You can't like, really block it out. Um, and, and plus, you know, we had uh, our day jobs and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So uh, the tracking took a couple years. And then uh, I ran into some some difficulties with uh, with the masters and whatnot, and uh, it just kept getting put on the back burner. That, that's basically what happened. I, I gave up on it so many times, but my between you know my wife uh, and Dell and, and, and Richard and a few other people, um, they encouraged me to to, uh, to see it through. And eventually, everything sort of fell into place. I found the right guy to mix it, and Jason Mazillis, who's a great musician and a great uh, engineer and, and producer, and all the things that he does, and um, and then it, and then it was you know finding a label, and uh, with Golden Robot we we finally found the right label, and that that and then it was all great from there. And I had no expectations; I just wanted to get it out. Um, so any anything positive coming back to me is just fantastic, and I really appreciate it. Awesome. And was there any um, you know trepidation, any nervousness when you were embarking on making a solo record and releasing it? Um, I probably at first. I think that. Uh, yeah, you know, it's it's a. Uh, I mean, you can see it as a lot of pressure, but again, uh, eventually, I just really wanted to put it out. Yeah, I think I was more nervous to hear what you know, um, you know, if my if my mom and dad would like it, my brother, you know, people I played music with, um, and uh, they love it. So that's good. Yep, so do I. And, um, you know, what I love about it as well is that it kind of, it feels very multi-generational. You know, it echoes a lot of different styles of rock. And I noticed, obviously, you had quite a rotation of musicians who play on some of these tracks as well. So, you know, I was wondering, you know, when you were making the record, you know, were you trying to capture these different eras under one roof? Or were you just trying to, you know, just, you know, do what you were looking to do? Um, you know, it basically, it starts with the songs. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, you know, having a you know, and I had some some help you know, in, in in writing the songs with Dell, you know, especially lyrically, um, and then you know him and, and Ricky Ricky Ward brought in a song as well. And uh, but it, the point is that a good song you should be able to play it on the guitar and sing it and have it sound just as good, or on the piano and sing it and have it sound just as good. Of course. Um, and I I do appreciate that you you uh, you know you. So I'll perceive it as, as multi generational because I, I think good music too should uh, you know it should translate from generation to generation. Um, sonically, I think what we were just doing what we what we know and what we you know what we uh, grew up knowing and how we you know how we got into the music business and that we just wanted to set up the instruments, record them live in the studio, um, and then go from there. So it was almost you know, it's all organic. There's not there's there's no computer generated. Um, music on on the record that's so nice to hear <laughs> it, is, it is a little refreshing i'm sure how that, that said um you know a lot of those songs were demoed up on my computer and mm -hmm. at the time 
one, one of the great things about, uh, one of the many great things about uh, having this opportunity to have been in, with Guns N' Roses all these years, and especially with you know, working with Axel, is the, you, know, you know keeping your perception open to everything you know, as it evolves, as music changes, and, and, and seeing how you can evolve along with that without stepping out of those, you know, what people, uh, what's going to work for you, I guess. Cool. Um, so I, I'd, been, I'd spent quite a bit of time um, during that, before that, and, and still since then, you know, working around modern music, modern music making techniques. Okay. Let's put it that way. So that's going to show up in there for sure. For sure. Um, and, 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 and not being closed minded to new music, um, and trying to, so, you know, taking everything, I think, uh, yeah, I, you know, as far as song structure and whatnot, that's, you know, it's going to show up too. You, you want to like do, you know, the boundaries should be wide open. There should be no boundaries. <laughs> awesome, and you can hear that. I mean, my personal favorite is Crestfallen, and I just want to take a second to congratulate you on that song. I love that track, dude. It's so good. Thank you. And great. That... Sorry. Well, Richard's guitar work on that is outstanding. It's incredible. I mean, I listen to it just to hear it play that stuff. It's amazing. It's the lyrical phrasing on it. I absolutely adore. Um, and given the given how long it took for you, you know, to to make this record happen, is you know, do you think this will be a one time endeavor, or can we expect more solo records from you, man? I would love to do more. I really yeah. would. Um, as always, and, and you know, my, my main priority is, is with Guns N' Roses, of course, and what we have going on. Um, if, uh, you know, eventually I'm going to have to put out something else. Because uh, I got a lot of stuff in my head, a lot of stuff on my computer, and needs to get out there. Um, but I'm going to make a promise to it myself, especially that it's not going to take ten years. Because ten years from now, <laughs> who knows? Man, you know. Sure. Um, but but again, that wasn't intentional, um, and I, I don't want it to sound like it's a theme with the things that I work on. Because it, it's not. Uh, it was just circumstances. So yeah, I think you know. With Golden Robot, I think we, we, we're signed up for another one. And uh, so when I can get that done, I will. Fantastic. And, you know, uh, just to talk about that, that whole thing for a second, you know, you were such an integral part of a very important and historically potent time in music. And I know you came a little later to Guns N' Roses and everything like that, but, you know, uh, hard rock and metal, it's been kind of... It's become a very niche market in in many respects, and I know I'm saying this to yourself, who's in Guns N' Roses. But I've just spoken to some other artists as well, and you know they kind of feel that you know we haven't had another Guns N' Roses, or we haven't had somebody do what Metallica has done, or those real iconic personalities like Jagger or Axel, for instance. And I was wondering, you know, uh, do, do you do you agree with this? Like, do you think we have a shortage a shortage of these iconic artists and bands, you know, today? Um, I mean, it's hard to say, really. I don't think any of the bands that you name can can be duplicated. I think it's exactly, uh, you know, even uh, yeah, we start out playing uh, music that is like the, the bands that influenced us, and, we, and so sometimes we get compared to those bands in some in some respect. But we're not, you know, it, it's you're to have that that level of success, you have to be your own entity. It's you know like athletes say who's going to be the next Michael Jordan? No one. <laughs> there's never going to be ever, um, and there's never going to be another Stephen Curry, or, or there's never going to be another anyone. Anyway, there's certainly not going to be another LeBron James, and just for basketball references, sure. but it's you know similar. So, um, what changes is though the, the music industry, the music, everything, the world changes, and it's changing faster than ever. When you know the bands that you named. Um, came out and and uh, and had their their you know the, the peaks of their success. You know, it was a different it's a different now. Everything was completely different. Mm -hmm. um, it was an industry that was uh, you know run by record sales and and um, you just don't have that anymore. Uh, but having said that, there's more excuse me. There's more bands now than ever that are accessible. So um, which is great, but when the focus is is so spread out i just i don't know if that can happen mm. and um sometimes it will happen but we just don't realize it um because you're expecting something to be just like you know it, uh, too similar to or too influenced by or too much like you know the bands that you name so uh when in fact it could be someone else 
um, sometimes people get it right, sometimes people get it wrong. I remember, yeah, I, I won't get into that, but yeah, that's it. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, it's okay. No, cool. That's some great insight, man. Because one of the things I find very cool about you is you have, you know, you have yourself immersed in a few different musical walks of life. So, you know, you've got GNR as your priority, of course, uh, but you've got your cover bands, uh, Hookers and Blow for fun. And you d then you've got your solo stuff, of course, you know. Um, I, I suppose, you know, because you went out and seeked your own record deal as well. And I'm curious, you know, if you'd be so kind to get your thoughts about, you know, the current state of our genre objectively. Is it a future you're confident and con or concerned for, given our topic of conversation? I'm, I, I, don't, I wouldn't say I'm concerned or confident. I'm just, I'm curious. I'm curious as to see, you know, how things are going to turn out. Um, it's, uh, it, you know... It, our fate at one point was in the hands of the big giant record companies, mm -hmm. basically. That was it, you know, and you could take them on, but if you have already had a sort of a level of success or were ballsy enough to do it at the beginning, um, and then you had more control over what, you know, what uh, what you could say, what you could do, etc. Um, you know, thanks to people like Tom Petty who took on the, the labels, for, you know, early on. Um, so that's, I think there's other sort of entities that now they're trying to uh, control all of that. Um, I don't know, they make computers and stuff, so <laughs> I won't say. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm just curious as to see how much they, they um, end up uh, getting. Awesome, man. And now just I want to go, obviously, back to yourself here. You know, um, it's quite a scale jump when you go from these giant stadiums to, you know, more intimate club settings. Does it take a second to adjust, or do you prepare any differently for these kind of shows when you're going from stadiums to clubs? Yeah, um, when it's clubs, I drink more. So. <laughs> you're a fan of Jaeger, I mean, correct? I haven't gotten less sleep, and I, probably the travel accommodations are quite different. Um I, you know, it's all rock and roll to me. I think there's, you know, there's more pressure in certain other areas in one than there is in the other. For me, um, you know, with Guns N' Roses, obviously, I don't have to sing as much. With Hookers and Blow and my thing, um, I gotta sing everything. So, you know, that singing sucks. Man. It's so fucking hard, man. <laughs> it really is. Anybody out there, if you have other options, do that. Do that. <laughs> um, yeah, and and I, I've always had such a great amount of. You know, I started off singing. I started when I was 12 years old. I started my first band. I was always the singer, and I did that till I was 20. And I, I, just, I couldn't take it anymore. It was just a lot of pressure, and I didn't really know how to sing at that point. But I'd been playing keyboards as well, so I thought I, I you know, I'd try see where that would take me. And I think I made a good choice. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, I've always had my voice as a, as a means of uh, of expression and and. Um, uh, it's you know part of the songwriting process and whatnot, so it's there. Um, I agreed to do it, so but I do. It, but that, this whole experience definitely gives me even more uh, appreciation for um, you know so how, how, how great Axel is in, in particular. Yeah, and in, in do yeah, it's 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 amazing. That's amazing. So yeah, yeah you know with, with hookers and blow and and my solo stuff, I've I've had to uh, sort of uh, I try to keep them separate. For, for whatever reason, because just to make Hercules below complete, you know, fuck off, do whatever I want sort of thing, but it's, uh, you know, over the years we've become a bit of a commodity, I think, uh, you know, we, I think we started to take it seriously, but it became funner to actually be, to care a little bit, um, so I've combined the two, I've decided to go ahead and just, uh, you know, consolidate and make my life a little bit easier, so, um, you know, with Hercules and Blow, we have this tour coming up later this summer. Great. With the Dead Daisies in the U.S., and we're going to be playing a lot of stuff off my record. Sounds great, man. So finally, just before I let you go, between you know G and R and hitting the road, hookers and blow, and your solo stuff, I would imagine um, you've got a pretty busy twelve to eighteen months ahead of you. What will that entail? Um, you never know. I mean, just a couple weeks ago, well, about a month ago, I got a call asking if I could go to fly to Boston and play three shows with Joe Perry and Brad Whitford from Aerosmith. That's awesome. Yeah, and because they needed someone uh, to fill in, their guy was busy. So I looked at my calendar and I said, "Yeah, it's clear. I'll be there." <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. It was really fun. Yeah, I would say so. All um, right, my. So I mean, that, that popped up out of nowhere, and so, and and that's good. And I don't want to jinx it, but hopefully things like that will keep happening. I'm, you know, I just I got the record, and uh, I, I'm not sure what's what's in store for Guns. I know we got some more touring to do later this year as well. And I'm always—that's always my number one priority, mm -hmm. and I'll—I'll I'll do 
up whenever uh, set down whatever I'm doing and, 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 and get to business with that whenever I can and uh, so we'll see you know as, as far as plans for outside of what I of, you know of, of, of my uh, my own solo personal stuff I, I never know people uh, I'm always the last to know you'll know before I do <laughs> okay that's cool man. well Lizzie listen thank you take, for taking the time to talk with us and the very best of luck with everything you got coming up man it's been a pleasure Awesome, man. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the support. And uh, to everybody out there, thank you for everything. All right, man. Take it easy. Peace.